All right, so moving on to a slightly different topic of acids and bases is buffers. Um, so the pH of pure water, as we've seen, changes rapidly whenever you add uh, acid or base. However, um, the, a change of pH can have huge biological or ecological effects. Right, fish can only live in a certain pH range. Um, your blood is a certain pH range. So if a little bit of acid or base is added into a lake, why don't all the fish die? Um, if you work out, you're gonna produce some lactic acid. Why doesn't that lactic acid change the pH of your blood and you die? Um, and so the reason that this doesn't happen is that most systems are buffered. So most biological slash environmental water sources are buffered. So what is a buffer? Let's take a look at that. So a buffer is a weak acid slash base conjugate pair in solution. So let's see how that prevents the pH from changing rapidly. So for example, we've got some water in here and then we're gonna to toss in a weak acid-base conjugate pair. So let's take example for ammonia, NH3, that's a weak base, and then we're gonna add some ammonium, which is its conjugate acid, right? And so in solution, now we've got some NH3 floating around and some NH4 plus floating around. And so, we could think about adding some acid to it, or we could think about adding some base to it. Now, in pure water, this acid or base would directly interact with the water, changing the concentration of hydronium or hydroxide, and thus changing the pH. But in these buffered solutions, our weak acid-base pair instead accepts the H or donates an H to prevent the water from being affected. So when we add an H plus in this upper example, instead of that interacting with water, it interacts with our weak base. So our NH3 will instead kind of sacrifice itself to buffer the solution from the effects of the change in pH. And so in this kind of end example here, we would now have two NH4 pluses. And so you can see that the concentration of H plus is unchanged, right? Because our weak base buffered it. So that means that the pH is approximately the same, right? Our pH didn't really change. Um, obviously, this is a simplified example. And then same thing down here in this other example, when we add hydroxide, instead of that interacting with the water directly, our ammonium, our weak acid, is gonna sacrifice an H plus instead, right? So we'll add the addition of hydroxide, and then we'll get some water plus just ammonia, right? And then down here, we will now have two ammonias. And so now our concentration of hydroxide is unchanged. And so the pOH and then also the pH stays approximately the same, right? So this is how a buffer works. So overall, just to kind of sum it up, instead of the acid slash base interacting with the water in solution, the buffer absorbs it instead.
leaving the pH relatively unchanged. Um, obviously, it's a bit of a simplified look at it. The pH will actually change a bit, but not nearly as much. So here's just an example on that. On the left side, we have an unbuffered solution and then a buffered solution. And then going from this uh, A to B, we're going to add H plus, and we've got an indicator in there. The indicator will turn red when the solution has become acidic. So we can tell that our unbuffered solution became acidic, right? We added some acid, it became acidic. However, our buffered solution did not become acidic. Even though we added H+, you can see that the pH stays the same. Um, so buffers aren't unlimited. And so this is known as the buffer capacity. And so um, if you add too much acid or base, basically the buffer can't buffer that much. And then you will have a drastic change in the pH. Um, so the kind of rule of thumb is that the conjugate acid base concentrations need to be within 10% of one another to be effective. Once you have way more of one than the other, um, you are no longer an effective buffer. Um, for example, that's uh, not quite an example of that, but um, in human blood, your, hum your blood is buffered, which basically keeps you from dying every time uh, you work out or eat something acidic. The buffer here is bicarbonate and carbonic acid. So that's H2CO3, carbonic acid, and it's conjugate base bicarbonate, right? So if you add H+, some of your bicarbonate is going to turn into carbonic acid. And then if you add some hydroxide, some of your carbonic acid is going to turn into bicarbonate, right? Oops, there should be a negative there instead. Um, so next point right here, I just want to kind of introduce this just because uh, the book covers it. I don't think it's all that important, but um, when this is true, when you have the conjugate acid base pairs within 10% of one another, you can find the pH of the solution relatively easy. And so the pH of the solution here is going to be equal to the pKa of the weak acid that you added plus the log of the conjugate base over the amount, the concentration of the conjugate base over the concentration of the acid, right? And so when they're within 10% of one another, the value of this component will be plus or minus one. So when you're out of the range, this will no longer be plus or minus one, and you'll see um, a huge change in your pH. Uh, this is known as the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Um, I won't ask any questions about this. I just want to introduce it just so um, I covered it. It's more useful um, in biology where you have a lot of buffered system. Um, and so to see an effect of the, this buffered versus unbuffered systems, take a look at 14.20 in your book. So in chapter exercise, 14.20 inside the OpenStax book. I won't show it here just because the calculations are a little bit long and tedious, uh, but it'll run you through some calculations of how you'd use rice tables to show that basically buffers, buffered solutions pH won't change nearly as much as unbuffered pH solutions.